Hello everybody and welcome back to another math learning video. Today we have some geometry again and we are given the following problem. What's the length of the red side here? So the red side it is referring to this side here of this triangle and under the triangle is another triangle. So let's break this down. We are also given four answer possibilities. So A, 4, B, 4 times square root of 2, C, 6, or D, 6 times square root of 2. So looking at the triangle that contains the red side that we are looking for, we can see that it is given an angle of 45 degrees. And we are also given that this is a right angle. This symbol here means right angle. So if we want to figure out the side length of it, right, we're going to have to be, we're going to use trigonometry, right? But in order to use trigonometry, we still need to have one side length known, but we do not know a side length of this triangle yet. So let's go look ahead and see what the bottom triangle can bring us. So here, we see it is also a right triangle and here it has an angle of 60 degrees and unlike the first triangle it gives us a side length so that means that we can perform trigonometry with it and how are we going to use this trigonometry well we are going to use this trigonometry in order to figure out this side length here and this side length borders the top triangle so then we can use this side length to figure out the red side length. This one here. So first thing that we're going to do, as mentioned already, is we're going to use trigonometry to find the side length that is highlighted in orange. So for those who may have trouble re remembering which trig functions to use, I always use so ka toa so when looking at the bottom triangle first we are always going to be doing it from the perspective of the angle so this angle here is going to be equal to the two side lengths that we have is we have our 3 over square root of 3 and this, this side length, its relation to this angle here is that it is the opposite side length from this angle, right? And then the orange length, the orange side, it is the hypotenuse of the triangle, right? So we need to see which function or which trig function gives us opposite. Opposite stands for O and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse stands for H. So, if you see it already, it is so. So this S is equal to sine, and it has an O for the opposite, and H for hypotenuse. So the way that we will use this so is that we're going to put sine and put the angle inside. Sine of 60 is equal to our opposite. So it's always going to be the first side length over the second side length. So our opposite is 3 square root of 3 over our h. We do not know what our h value is so I'm just going to give it a variable. I'm going to give it a variable y. So we have our sine 60 degrees is equal to 3 times square root of 3 is over y. And now we can solve for y to find this missing side length. So First thing we want to do is we want to get it out of the denominator, right? So to get this variable out of the denominator, we're going to multiply it on both sides. So then we have y times sine 60 degrees is equal to 3 times square root of 3. And now to get y by itself, simply just divide sine 60 degrees. So our y is equal to 3 square root of 3 over sine 60 degrees. So now 
we're going to be doing this problem without a calculator, right? So how do we figure out what sine of 60 degrees is? Well, if you're like me and we're taught the unit circle, let's go ahead and do this. Let's use the unit circle. So let's draw out the circle. Remember, the unit circle has four sections. So we have our 30 degrees, our 40 degrees, sorry, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So let's just keep our 60 degrees. So your cosine is going to be your x value and your sine is going to be the y value of this point here. So normally you would have to memorize this unit circle values. So normally our cosine of 60 is 1 half and our sine of 60 is 3 halves. So we can use this and instead of sine 60 here we'll just have y is equal to 3 over square root of 3 over 3 halves. Square root of 3 halves, I apologize. So 3 over square root of 3 over square root of 3 over 2. So now when you divide by a fraction as we're doing here, right? Because this is a fraction. That is the exact same thing as if we were to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So y is equal to, we still have our 3 square root of 3, and I'm going to put it over 1 because any number can be put as over 1 to turn into a fraction. And now instead of dividing it by square root of 3 over 2, I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal and the reciprocal is just, you just flip the fraction around, and that will be 2 over square root of 3. Sorry, I don't know why I put an equal sign there. It has to be times 2 over square root of 3. And now, we can multiply this, but, so look, always look at the two places that are across from each other. So this place here and this place here, and see if anything can cancel out. Something can cancel out here, as a matter of fact, and there's a square root of 3 here and a square root of 3 here. So, they cancel out. So, we just have 3 times 2 over 1 is equal to 6 over 1. And over 1, you can, is basically just means that it's a whole number. So, you can just ignore it and just, it's equal to 6. So, our y value here is equal to 6. So, we got the first part done. So we got that our y is equal to 6, but we are not looking for a y value. We're going to look for, we're looking for a red side length here, which I'm going to call x. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the other triangle. So we're going to use the degrees, so our angle and our known side length, since we have our known side length now but we need to see into which trigonomic function it will fit into. So we have our 45 degrees and our one, our known value is opposite of it and our unknown value, so the other side that we're going to use is the hypotenuse. So coincidentally we're going to be using sine once again. So let's go ahead and do it because we have our opposite in our hypotenuse. So, sine of 45 degrees, right, is equal to our opposite, and then we're going to, which is equal to 6, over our hypotenuse, which is x. So now, like we did last time, we are going to multiply x by both sides, since we, got, we want to get x by itself. So, x sine of 45 degrees is equal to 6 and now we divide by sine 45 degrees 45 degrees so our x is equal to not that it's equal actually to 6 over sine 45 degrees okay so we once again are going to use the unit circle because we need to figure out what sine 45 is equal to. So let's draw it. That's very ugly. Let me redraw that. Okay, so 45 degrees. So one 
quarter of the unit circle is 90 degrees, right? So that means that 45 degrees is right in the middle. And this one for me is always easy to memorize because when you have 45 degrees, both the cosine and sine is are the exact same, and they are both going to be square root of 2. So the coordinate here is square root of 2 over 2. Oh, sorry, I misspoke before. I said that it's always going to be square root of 2, but it's actually always going to be square root of 2 over 2. I apologize for that. So our sine is going to be square root of 2. So, our sine of 45, so we can plug square root of 2 over 2 instead of for our sine 45. So let's go ahead and do that. So x is equal to 6 over square root of 2 over 2. And as we did before, we can just multiply. So since we're dividing by fraction, we can just multiply by the reciprocal. So our x is equal to 6 times 2 over square root of 2 and I'm gonna put the 6 over 1 and now so we cannot we cannot so far we cannot simplify anything we can't cancel out here between 6 and square root of 2 or 2 and 1 so let's just multiply it all together for now so we have 12 over square root of 2 okay but when we look, we see that this square, this 12 over square root of 2 is not in our answers, right? Not one of our possibilities. So we need to see if we can simplify or rewrite this square 12 over square root of 2. So since none of our answers, possibilities, is what we have, let's try to rewrite this. And notice this square root of 2 in the denominator. So a lot of times it is kind of unprofessional to have a square root number in the denominator so let's try to get rid of that square root number and in order to do that we'll just square that number right so or not square it but multiply it by square root of 2 so we can get a full number a whole number and that will be our bottom will turn into 2 and our top will turn into 12 times square root of 2. So now we can simplify something. So we see that we can do 12. We can cancel out or cross out the 2 from the bottom. And then we just divide the top by 2. So this 12 will turn into 6. So our answer that we have is 6 times square root of 2. So that is the correct answer. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys would like to see more of this type of content, let me know in the comments. And with that being said, thank you for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye!